Hello and welcome to another preview show here at Vitality Stadium. Matchday commentator Chris Temple joins me and we'll be talking about everything that's gone on here at AFC Bournemouth in the last week. Let's take a look at what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 3-1 defeat to Burnley here at Vitality Stadium. We'll also be joined by Lewis Cook as he talks us through how his recovery from injury is going. And finally we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Brighton at the Amex Stadium. Well, we're going to start back at last weekend and that 3-1 defeat to Burnley. Chris, it, it wasn't a good one, was it? No, I feel like I'm uh, sort of repeating myself. You're throwing me that question every week at the moment, which is disappointing. Um, yeah, um, obviously great start and then just all unravelled from there. I think the most concerning thing was what Eddie Howe said after the game is that the team uh, didn't have the identity that he sets them out with, which is, um, you know, you don't hear Eddie say that too often. Um, you know, there were excuses at Leicester with the, the injuries and the... Uh, international break and fatigue and various other things but there weren't many excuses here against Burnley um, Burnley you know did what they do best um, you know their, their physical approach got them the uh, I guess got them the win in the end Bournemouth didn't deal with it very well a couple of goalkeeping sort of question marks as well which is I'm sure we'll come on to in a bit but yeah all in all that was a, a really disappointing performance and you know we stood here last week and said that this was a, a game where really it was a great opportunity to, to show the fans we haven't switched off for the summer there's everything still to play for um, the spirit is not that low um, and yeah and then that performance turns up so um, I we're here only for a few minutes every Friday having to, to sort of discuss where it went wrong. So for Eddie Howe in the, in the week, trying to find different ways to, I guess, convey the same message, which is, come on, we're, we're a lot better than this. Um, uh, he'll be scratching his head again and be, be digging deep this week, I'm sure, to, to try and um, turn things around. And of course, we saw that really quick start that we saw so much at the start of the season, but there wasn't anything really to follow as we as we saw at the start of the season. You know, that performance was carried on for the whole 90 minutes. And last week it was, you know, just a, a quick start and nothing more. Yeah, that, that's, you know, the unfortunate bit. Burnley, you know, when they go behind, they, they showed fighting spirit, you know, a Sean Dyche sort of side, you know, you certainly expect them to keep battling. Um, Ashley Barnes has been, you know, a, a bit of a scourge of, of Bournemouth down the years in, in Burnley colours and in Brighton colours, I think as well, going back a bit. Um, first man ever to score at both ends in the Premier League, which is, uh, which was a random stat as well. Um, but yeah, it's just no no comeback from there. And again, I think when you're, you know, you're lacking that spark at the moment, you need your, your, your Ryan Frasers or your, you know, your David Brooks or somebody, that's when you're looking to those sort of players just to suddenly make something happen with a bit of brilliance. And, and you know, their, their confidence is probably a little bit sort of suffered, suffering at the moment as well, like everybody's is. It's by no means their fault. Um, you know, Callum and, and Joshua King up the top just need a couple of things to go in for them at the moment as well. So, yeah, all in all, just, um, just unfortunately another day to forget. And I, I feel bad for the fans who, you know, at the moment are seeing a team that is not the team they've they've paid good money all season to come and watch. And of course, ahead of the game, we learned that there'd be no Charlie Daniels, not just for the game, but for the rest of the season. That's a, a big blow, isn't it? Yeah, for Charlie, real a real blow at this stage of the season. You know, I mean, if there's any positive to be found, at least, you know, there's only five games left of this season. But of course, it's so bad that he's going to miss the start of next season. So there's no positive in that. Um, I guess I'm, I'm talking if he got injured at the start of the season, was guaranteed to miss a whole season. And that would be a huge blow, you know, along the Simon Francis sort of Lewis Cook lines. Um, but yeah, so real, real bad news for Charlie. He's obviously had a very difficult um, few months sort of personally as well so it just caps a, a really really tough time for him personally so we wish him all the best and of course Diego Rico you know almost on a day later wasn't it um he's out for the season as well with uh, with an ankle problem so it never rains it pours two left backs in the space you're only two left backs out and out left backs in the space of uh, a couple of days at least Adam Smith is back now to fill in that role um and I guess it sort of summarizes a, a frustrating campaign for Diego Rico as well because 10 million pounds he started five Premier League games um, he hasn't he hasn't shown ten million pounds worth yet. I mean, there's there's no hiding from that fact. Um, Eddie Howe says you know they very much still believe in the player. The adaptation to the Premier League has taken a bit longer with Diego than maybe they expected it to. I think we've all seen it in flashes of of what he can offer. Um, you know, he's, he's looked good as a wing back bombing up and down. Maybe more comfortable going forward than going back. Um, his left foot, you know, he's crashed the woodwork a couple of times with free kicks. Good set piece delivery, um, but yeah, defensively. Still a few question marks. So hopefully another summer, you know, back fit. Hopefully, um, you know, he's only due to be out for six weeks. So hopefully he'll be back fit in the summer and um, an opportunity to get some good pre-season work in. Absolutely. Well, now, as you may have seen, AFCB TV are bringing out a documentary to mark 10 years since that great escape season. It will be airing on Thursday, the 25th of April, and it will be completely free across all of our channels. Let's take a little look at what you can expect. The breaking news in sport that AFC Bournemouth had lost their fight to avoid going into administration. 
starting the next season on minus 17 points, you thought, well, this is it. There, there isn't going to be a Bournemouth anymore. There wasn't going to be a great escape season. It was the end of the road. I think a number of us thought, well, the writing could be on the wall this time. This might be just one deduction too many. He was always aware of the situation, you know, the ramifications of what could happen if we, if we did get relegated to the club. The journey began with Ed. Free kick, Pittman 30 yards out ahead. Oh, terrific! It's a screamer for Brett Pittman! Fletcher, left footed yeah. strike! It's into the back of the net! The Bournemouth fans hail the Messiah! It's one of the best moments in my career, still, still now. Our attitude was, are these the big boys? Like, come on in, let's, ha let's have it with you. Still running Mosley, low yeah. shot! Oh, Mark Mosley! Into Pittman's path once more. Still he goes out two players. Oh, oh, what a goal by Brett Pittman! It was difficult times for the club, but you know that they still showed up in the numbers and backed us when we needed them. You rarely get their moments in, in your life. When you look back and look at it from start to finish, what an achievement it actually is. If there's ever a time in my 20 odd year career to score a goal. It has to be now. If everything had been easy at the start, I think, well, the story wouldn't have been as good. Well, it's certainly going to be a very exciting watch. That will be airing for free on AFCB TV on Thursday, the 25th of April. Now then, as you may have seen, we've been joined by our very own Lewis Cook. Lewis, thank you for joining us. No I'm sure the question on everyone mind, everyone's mind is, how are you and, and how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm good. Um, uh, it's been about four months now since the op. Um, I'm feeling strong, knee feels great. Um, yeah, I'm on target, I think. Um, getting stronger every day and, and, and really improving. And for you, how have the last few months been mentally? Because obviously it's the, it's the first big injury of your career. Yeah, it's not, it's not been too bad. Um, obviously, it's, there's good days and bad days, but... I was told that before, so um, it's just good once you get to a, a, a position where you can start kicking a ball around, jogging around and things like that, it's, it's good, you like, feel normal again, so um, I'm at a stage now where it's, it's enjoyable again, um, and yeah, not too too long. Have there been any surprises along the road? What are the bits of the, of the recovery and I guess that you maybe weren't prepared for that you, you never quite get, understand it until they actually come along? Yeah, I think it's the first bit after the operation, I think, yeah, you, it swells up that much and you, you just can't move really. And, You've got to try and get to a point where you, you keep working on your bend of your knee and things. But um, it, but then it's, again, it surprised me that how, how fast it gets better. Um, I don't think I'd be where I am now running around and stuff um, uh, this this time. But um, they're, they're things that probably surprised me most. And what about the, the motivation when you're on your own? It's you one to one with the medical staff. You haven't got the other lads around you pushing you on. I know you're in and around the, the camp, yeah, but in yeah. terms of the work you're doing every day. Yeah, I think um, the staff and, the, and and everyone's been great here, and obviously. Um, I've got I've got front row and people who's who's been in the same boat and a, a few other lads that have been injured as well so um, they they help a lot we we know when one of us needs a little push sometimes in the morning but um, no it's great everyone's everyone's been really good with me and you mentioned Frano as well there how how good has it been having someone obviously you don't wish an injury upon anyone but having someone that's going through the same thing you know in there with you yeah it's helped a lot I think um, obviously when we've had setbacks um, either me or Frano like little little bumps in the road. Um, I might be able to say that, oh yeah, that happened to me as well and stuff, so we could bounce off each other that way. But um, again, uh, it's kind of a motivation thing. We're both in similar positions and we're both trying to get back fit. So um, we, we we help each other along the way and um, yeah, he's been great. And we saw that you obviously went out to Dubai with the squad. What was that like having a change of scenery for you, you mentally? Yeah, that was great. I think um should get a bit, well, it's sunny here, but get a bit more more heat, I'd say. Uh, different different uh, scenery uh, scenario. Um, yeah, it was great. I think we got a lot of good work in there and um, it's always a su successful trip. Would you describe yourself as a good injured player? Do you deal well with doing things on your own and, and the frustrations and things? Uh, yeah, I think I'm a good injured player most of the time. Obviously, sometimes I can get a bit frustrated and things, just wanting to kick a ball around all the time uh, when I'm not supposed to. But um, no, I think I'm, I'd like to say I'm a good, 
good work here when I'm injured, yeah. What about how the, the team's form on the pitch affects you as well? Because I'm sure when the team is flying and the goals are going in left, right and centre, you're absolutely itching to get back out there. I'm sure you are anyway, but what about when the difficult times and you're watching from the stand? And again, I probably you wish out you're out there for a different reason to try and correct things. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think it's always easy to say when you're in the stand, oh, you should have done that there. It's completely different when you're playing. So I can't really, um, can't really judge or anything, but I think the lads are giving it their all. And, that's all we can really ask for. It's, it's, we're not doing it on purpose when we lose the games. We're just um, something that just hasn't clicked in the, in the moment. So um, hopefully we can put that right this weekend and and uh, push on for the rest of the end, of, end of the season well. And just finally, on a match day here itself, we obviously see you watching from the box. Last week you were you were in the south stand as well. What's that like for you? Do you like to have a role in, and go in the dressing room before the game, or do you like to keep yourself away from it? Um, I'm normally working on a Saturday, so I'll see the lads before the game. Um, but then I like to we, we go in the change room uh, just just before kick off, and just before they go out to warm up. Sorry, and just wish them good luck and stuff to make sure we're watching and stuff. Um, and yeah, me and Cookie were in the stand the other day, and it, it was good to be in, in amongst the fans and things. Um, it didn't go our way, but um, again, we try and put it right this this weekend. Well, I'm sure I speak on behalf of every single AFC Bournemouth fan when we say we wish you the very best, and we we hope to see you back out there very soon. Thank you. Cheers. Well, for now on the AFC BTV preview show, our attention turns to tomorrow's game against Brighton. Let's take a look at what Eddie Howe had to say in this morning's press conference. Um, missing Charlie now for a long period of time. Um, such a consistent performer, such a, a great attitude every day. So he's a big miss. And Diego, unfortunately, rolled his ankle last week right at the end of the game. And uh, we miss him now for the season. So a big blow because uh, potentially he had good opportunities to play between now and the end of the season. Well, I think the last two games, I think when you look at them, um, we, we've been disappointed with what we've delivered. I think in terms of just how we play and our performance wise, I think we've dipped below the standards that we know we're capable of. So we will come through this period of time, got no doubt about that, because we've got a quality team and I really do believe in the players. So um, you go through these phases, but what's important when you do go through the phases is that you don't lose your, your way of playing and what really defines you and that's what we're desperately searching for tomorrow. So that's what we've tried to do. We've gone back to, to basics, if you like, in terms of how we play and what our identity is and hopefully that will show this weekend. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in this morning's press conference. Chris, it will be a, a much needed three points if they can get it, won't it? Yeah, both, again, same as last week, you know, Brighton absolutely need the points. Um, home form, you know, they're, they're a bit sticky at home. They're, they're hard to beat at home, but they've actually lost quite a few games there as well. One or two good results. Um, I guess for them, the, for Brighton, the, the sort of galvanising factor can be Wembley. Um, they lost, but they played pretty well. You know, City had an off day, of course, in the semi-final. But, and again, for Bournemouth fans, looking back at having lost here to Brighton in the third round, what could have been a great day out of Wembley in a semi-final? I know it doesn't work directly like that, of course. There's a lot more hurdles between the, the semi and the third round. But, um, yeah, Brighton will be looking to, to use that now as motivation going forward. They'll probably shuffle their pack a little bit, I think, because they had three games last week. Of course, they had to go to Chelsea and um, fill in their sort of missing league game, if you like. They've still got a couple of games in hand down the bottom, so they're maybe not quite in as... Uh, as much perilous, uh, as much of a perilous position as a couple of other teams, but points on the board, as the cliche goes, is always better than uh, games in hand. So yeah, they'll be certainly very keen. Um, they played pretty well here in the FA Cup, um, albeit both teams were changed. Bournemouth weren't very good, but Brighton played pretty well. Um, the league game, of course, here early in the season, Bournemouth had a, a very good win at a very important time when um, the results hadn't been going great. So, yeah, it'll, be, it'll certainly be a tough game. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good one for the fans. Easter holidays um, allow plenty of time if you're driving, by the way, because that road to Brighton in the Easter holidays, if the sun's out again on a Saturday morning, is, is not going to forward, it's not going to be fun, that one. Uh, we're leaving at 6am, I think, me and Willow. No, not quite. Um, but, yeah, it's, um, yeah, all in all, tough game, but... And again, the away form comes into question, doesn't it? Four wins, no draws, 12 losses. Um, you know, this is the time to try and put a couple of, uh, or put a, an extra number in the, the most important column there. Um, and, and just try and at least cling on to maybe finishing 11th or 12th possibly, not finishing 14th or 15th. And of course, you were at Wembley last week working for the FA Cup semi-finals. What did you make of Brighton? Of course, they're playing Manchester City, but but what did you make of their performance? Well, you just thought towards the end of the game, you know, the more they pinged in the set pieces towards Duncan Duffy, you know, um, that they might get something to bounce for them that way. I think what you saw was that in the second half, they had nothing to lose. You know, they, they just, they were trying to find some some momentum in the game. They threw quite a lot forward. It wasn't Glenn Murray's day. He got taken off. Um, but all in all, you know, you look at Knockart, who had a good game. Um, I was impressed with Basuma when he played here in the uh, earlier in the 
the season as well. Um, so yeah, for, and the set piece threat is obvious, and, and Bournemouth didn't deal very well with Burnley's physical threat last week. So they'll hope to keep a lid on uh, on Duncan Duffy for sure. Um, but yeah, again, it was a game they had nothing to lose in Brighton, so it was a good chance to try and build some forward momentum. The fans certainly went to Wembley knowing probably it was going to be their day out at Wembley. They probably weren't going to get to the final. They were absolutely brilliant, the Brighton fans. So there'll be a great atmosphere at the Amex from them. They know how important this game is as well. Um, of course, Burnley play Cardiff as well this weekend. So that's uh, another sort of big game down the bottom. Um, but if Brighton can can get a couple of uh, couple of results now, that will that will see them safe. So the motivation for them is clear. And speaking of momentum and, and motivation, they've got back-to-back -back home games. They've got us on Saturday and, and Cardiff on Tuesday. <coughs> so it's two games that they'll really be eyeing to you know, get maximum points from. Yeah, they'll probably see the Cardiff game as, as bigger, um, certainly not to lose that game anyway. Um, but yeah, if they could get, I think they're looking to get something from Bournemouth at least um, to sort of keep them or propel them forward into that Cardiff game. Um, but from Bournemouth's point of view, you know, you've, again, we, we say about getting the away form back going, just getting the spark back just for the last four games. Because if you look at the, the games coming up, you know, Fulham are already down here next weekend, Easter weekend. Uh, then it's Southampton away who, you know, depending on if Brighton, you know, can get a couple of results, Southampton are suddenly sort of uh, back into the, the sticky part. But of course, Cardiff is still a bit of a way adrift. Um, and then obviously, you know, you're looking at Tottenham and then Palace to finish with. So out of those four games, you'd say that certainly a couple of them are winnable. Um, I'm just going to throw in the, the 47 points again because I think this is probably the last week I'm going to say it's doable. Uh, nine points from 15 is doable. I'm not going to say nine points from 12 is doable um, next week, which you wait. If it does get to that, they'll go and do it. Um, but yeah, exactly. So this, this is the last week I'm going to say keep going for that 47. Um, but at the moment, you, you can't see that. Um, if we're totally honest, you can't see it from the way the team are playing. Um, but I'm just hoping that, you know, so somewhere a sparkle, you know, Callum will hit a blinder from 30 yards or something. You just need a moment of that luck like that to, uh, to turn. And in terms of, of Brighton's players, we all know Glenn Murray all too well. And you mentioned Basuma, but who else for you are, are the ones to watch? I think Knockout. I mean, Knockout was man of the match last weekend. Um, you know, he, he works pretty tirelessly up and down the uh, the flanks for them. Um, you know, they've got sort of a, a robust midfielder in Dale Stevens, a central midfielder, former Southampton Loney as well. I just hope that I mentioned Duffy and Duncan, you know, that it's, it's sort of a bit of a cliche to talk about them. But I just hope Bournemouth can deal with them at, at set plays because, um, you know, they have defended set plays reasonably well this season. Not, they haven't conceded that many from from set plays but they're really obvious threat but I think Knockhart's a player you know who's, who's um, having a little bit of a, a purple patch at the minute he's very he's a fan's favorite as well he's a real sort of leave it all out their eyeballs out type of sort of passionate player that the fans relate to and connect to so um, yeah I think back on home soil he would be one that um, um, you know would be would be certainly the Brighton fans we be looking to. And in terms of our team news, there's obviously decisions to be made. There's no Daniels, no Rico, and in goal as well. There's a lot of decisions for Eddie Howe to think about, isn't there? Yeah, the goalkeeping one's just it's just intriguing, isn't it? Um, just I don't, We don't know if anything's happened behind the scenes. We don't know if there's any reason beyond simply performance and training and whatever. Um, you know, Eddie Howe won't talk about those things, of course. And that, that some things are, um, uh, you know, best left behind sort of training ground doors, if you like. But... Azmi's performance last week, you know, again, not, not wishing to dig players out, but he'll want to have done better with a couple of those goals. That's probably the polite way of saying it. Um, and if Eddie has been making selections on performance, like he said he did when he changed the goalkeepers back again and put Azmi back in, then people would say, well, Arthur Boris has got to come back in. But you can't, you can't, I don't think you could be changing your keeper every week, uh, which just sort of adds intrigue to why it was changed back in the first place. So, I mean, if you're asking me to pin my, my colours to now, down now, I would say that Azmi Begovic will probably play. Um, because I think Eddie will want that, him to get that one out of his system um, from the Burnley game. But it, it's a really interesting situation. Well, it is. It's going to be a very interesting game indeed. If you are going down to Brighton, as Chris said, leave a lot of time with all of the Easter traffic. But if you're not going, then please keep an eye on all of our social media channels for the latest updates. Thanks for joining us.